Hello. Welcome to the first YouTube demo of OniVim 2. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, but I'm really excited to share with you the progress we've made since our pre-alpha build. First thing you'll notice is that we have a brand new welcome screen. Our goal was to showcase some of the shortcuts to help you get started. In the future, we want to expand this and show recent files and workspaces, and maybe have some tools to help learn Vim as well. Another thing you'll notice is that the file explorer has been improved. That's thanks to Glenn. He's done some amazing work polishing our UI. Now let's open up the command palette with command shift P. I'm going to turn on a feature called key displayer. Glenn has revamped this menu too, so we get these nice highlights for the filtered search text. Turn this on, and now you can see what I'm typing. Most of this demo will be through the keyboard in true Vim spirit. All right, let's open up a file with quick open. I'm just gonna find a reason file to open up. And first, notice the syntax highlighting. This is actually powered by a VS Code TextMate grammar. Let's write some code. I'm gonna jump down, add some logging. And we actually get completions powered by the reason VS Code extension by Jared Forsyth, which we bundle. It's pretty useful for us since the editor itself is built in Reason. And note that we see details about the completion if it's available, and we support fuzzy matching. So if I type IO, it's still going to match info, and I can expand that and do my logging. Let's make a mistake now. Maybe I'm so careless I forgot to add a parenthesis at the end. You'll notice that diagnostics show up in the editor here, but also in the minimap and the scroll bar. This is really handy if I'm jumping across the file and I want to know where to edit next or where to go. I can still see that there's errors on the side here in the minimap and scroll bar. Not only that, but we have a status bar indicator here for diagnostics, um, and we can open up that diagnostics pane with Command Shift M. And I can also see information about the error there. You'll notice we have another pane here, search, which I can get out with Command Shift F. And I can use this to search across the workspace. This is a great feature added by Glenn as well, and it's powered by RipGrep, just like VS Code. So Reason isn't the only VS Code extension we bundle. We actually bundle the TypeScript and CSS language extensions as well. Let's create a TypeScript file. I'm going to start writing some code. So you can see again that I get the diagnostics and completions that I'd expect. I can check out a more interesting object too, like document, body, inner HTML, and it works just like I would expect. And there's some other cool features that we get from the language server and through the VS Code extension host. Things like these document highlights. And you'll notice that underline under ABC, that's telling me that a definition is available. So if I use GD, I can go to definition. And it actually works, at least the TypeScript extension allows us to go to definition across files. So if I use gd on this toString, it's going to take me to the TypeScript definition file, um, which has the implementation or the definition of toString for a number. I'm going to jump back. And so we've got this VS Code compatible syntax highlighting. And on top of that, we've integrated VS Code themes into our UI. And these themes specify not just the editor tokens, but also how the UI looks as a whole. And we have a bunch bundled. My favorite right now if I open up the theme picker, is this laser wave theme. Kind of a retro synth wave 80s vibe. But we have a bunch of other ones too. And in fact, we even bundle up the Visual Studio theme. One feature that made it in right at the buzzer that's still ex a bit experimental is a carryover from our V1, and it's called Sneak Mode. I can get to it by pressing Control G and it's a way to use the keyboard to access any of the UI. When I use it, these annotations pop up across all the clickable elements. And I can just type to narrow it until I select the UI element I'm after. 
In this case, I want to show you the extensions pane. So I'll type F, and it acts as if I click that element. Uh, these are the VS Code extensions that we bundled today. It's actually pretty huge progress. It's a major architectural step forward for us to have set up a native front end, which communicates with the node VS Code backend, the extension host. It was one of the biggest architectural unknowns, and we have that in place now. However, the extension surface area is also pretty huge. So even though we have some basics wired up, like completion, diagnostics, status bar integration, we still have a lot left. And we have a tracking issue here that shows kind of the work remaining. And there are a lot of pieces that we still have left to uh, plumb through and wire up. In addition, we're interested in improving our installation story so that it's easier to find, download, and use extensions. We also want to bring in an integrated terminal and start looking at source control integration, like Git integration. I want to say a huge thank you to our team, Glenn and Ryan, as well as everyone who supported the project by pre-ordering or backing us on Patreon. This wouldn't have been possible otherwise, so thank you. I'm really excited about the foundation we've built and where we're going for 2020. We're really making incredible progress towards realizing our vision of a fast, modern, beautiful modal editor. And if you haven't already, consider pre-ordering at v2.onivim.io. Uh, the build that I demoed is available at our early access portal here. Cheers, and thank you so much for watching.